Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. So, welcome back to another topic, another video where we will be discussing very, very timely topics with the, with regards to science, medical technology, to be specific. So, today, our topic is very much timely and relevant about what is happening around us nowadays. So, I hope everyone is excited to dig into our topic for this morning so our topic is understanding your coronavirus disease 2019 and its threat to community and public health so this is very much timely and relevant because right now every one of us are on co enhanced community quarantine at home because of your SARS-CoV-2 or the causative agent of your COVID-19 so your coronavirus disease 2019 is very important nowadays. It was actually first recorded in December 31, 2019 in China. But nowadays, specifically, there are actually a couple of countries globally that have been infected and have been um, being pestered currently by your SARS-CoV-2. And today... I want us to discuss your COVID-19 and your SARS-CoV-2 with regards to its prevention, with regards to the signs and symptoms, what you can do right now at home, and also talking about a little about its scientific background. So let's start. So your coronavirus, generally, these are envelope viruses and they are RNA viruses. So, sir, what do you mean now by envelope viruses? So, when we say envelope vir viruses, because there are two types of viruses according to their coating, it can be an envelope virus or a naked virus. So, the, the envelope virus, obviously, these are viruses that has its own lipid bilayer or a coating. On the other hand, we also have your naked viruses this the those naked viruses do not have your envelope so technically it, it's just your nucleocapsid and then your genetic material and some proteins that are very important so your coronavirus contains a helical nucleocapsid so maybe some of you are wondering now what is the difference between your nucleocapsid and what is the difference between your envelope i'm gonna show you a picture so looking on your right right now you can see a picture of your coronavirus so your coronavirus here your coronavirus is characterized to have your envelope so as you can see your envelope now is this one okay the envelope is this one and what about your nucleocapsid your nucleocapsid is this one your nucleocapsid to be specific is a protein coating your genetic material yes your genetic material i'm saying it's genetic material because again there are viruses that can be a dna virus or an rna virus so we, what we have in front of us today is your rna virus that has its helical nucleocapsid so helical the shape so it's somehow cylindrical so as you can see that helical nucleocapsid coats your RNA or your genetic material. On the other hand, that nucleocapsid is also being encapsulated by your envelope. And on those envelopes, I hope you can see there, you can see some glycoproteins that are projecting from your envelope. And those glycoprotein spikes are very important okay on your right you can also see a picture of your coronavirus under your transmission electron microscope and going now to sir what are those club or petal shaped projections those are now your glycoproteins your glycoprotein these are glycoprotein spikes that are very important when it comes to the cell identification or technically in the docking of your virus to the cell that it will be infecting so as you can see when you are looking at your glycoprotein spikes on the on the envelope it can actually look like a corona isn't it it's like a corona or a crown so when you're looking at it 
you're actually gonna look at it and see and actually realize that it somehow resemble a crown that's why it actually was named coronavirus because it actually looks like really a corona if a, a, a crown okay so that is the reason why you, we are calling them your coronavirus this coronavirus are actually the, the causative agent of your common colds your common cough and some lower respiratory tract infections actually even before your SARS-CoV-2 happened, the causative agent of your COVID-19, we actually have encountered a lot of coronaviruses, a lot of strain of a lot of different strains of your coronaviruses in the past. In fact, what causes your common colds, your your common cough could actually also be a strain of your coronavirus. So your coronavirus can actually cause mild symptoms to severe syndromes okay to severe syndromes that's now lead me to what happened in 2003 and in 2012 where we actually encountered your SARS coronavirus and your MERS coronavirus respectively so your SARS coronavirus or your severe acute respiratory syndrome 1 was first encountered in 2003 also in china so it was actually believed that when um when the chinese people there our chinese brothers and sisters there were able to um consume a civet cat so it's actually very common there that there is a wildlife um consumption there so in 2003 china first reported their case of sars caused by your SARS coronavirus 1 on this in the same thing okay and the same the same thing ha also happened in the Middle East is to be specific in Saudi Arabia in 2012 where they experienced your MERS coronavirus or your Middle East respiratory syndrome coronavirus in 2012 that was also believed to be caused by camels okay so now what we have now is your SARS-CoV-2 which actually was believed to be from a wild animal as well so we'll go through that eventually so as you can see your coronavirus can cause mild infections like your mild your common colds your cough to lower respiratory tract infection to really severe cases and now what's being the cause of the death for most people being infected by covid by your that has your covid 19 or your pneumonia okay so moving on your coronavirus now your novel coronavirus was first alerted in the who by december 31 2019 so it was actually december december 31 2019 when china first alerted who that there was a there were a cluster of people that has a pneumonia or a flu-like symptoms appearing so at that time they called it your novel coronavirus they refer to the coronavirus that has not been previously identified because uh when they compared the genetic information of this so-called virus at that time they cannot identify it to any of the former strains of coronavirus thus given given the name now as your novel coronavirus of 2019 so it was january 7 when the virus was identified so imagine that it the first case were reported december 31 and the and the agent the viral agent was identified in january 7 so these informations are coming from the who so during those time by january 7 there were have there was now an, an identification that there is a novel coronavirus around that is now causing your covid disease or your coronavirus disease of 2019 so it was until 2000 it was until january 11 when the first death was recorded and actually 
we don't have a name for this disease at that time yet. Not until February 11, when the WHO issued the, the new name of the disease, which is Coronavirus Disease 2019. Now, we all know as your COVID-19. And right now, I want us to be clear that your COVID-19 is not the virus itself. Are we clear? So your COVID-19 is Coronavirus Disease 2019. So COVID-19 thus refers to the disease caused by the novel coronavirus that we call now as your SARS coronavirus 2. Are we clear? So this is your SARS coronavirus 2. I hope everyone if everything is clear. So if you use it and and when you use it to educate other people, you're very much aware that it is not COVID-19 that is the virus, instead that is the disease. And it is your SARS coronavirus 2 that causes the disease. So let us dig in to what we know at the moment. So your COVID-19 was first detected in Wuhan City, Hubei, China. Again, it was around December 31, 2019. And I hope you already have read a lot of articles about it because you are, um, when you are trying to scan the internet. So it actually originated from the live animal market in Wuhan. So as you can see, your wildlife, um, your wildlife consumption in China is very much um, rampant up to this day, but not until another another um, pandemic ha arises. So they actually stop selling li wildlife at the market at the moment. So it is actually believed to be um, the bats that is the reservoir or the vector of your SARS coronavirus 2. Why and how did they come up to that? Because when they did a genomic sequence analysis of your SARS-CoV-2, it showed that 88% was identified with two bat-derived SARS-like coronavirus. So when they studied the genetic makeup of your SARS coronavirus 2, it was actually linked to, to two strains of your coronavirus that is usually found in your bat. So that is maybe why people are very panicky right now, isn't it? So your COVID-19 is actually characterized to have an onset of your signs and symptoms approximately 5.2 days according to Rothan and according to CDC it actually would appear from 2 to 14 days as you can see that is the reason why individuals or our PUM and your PUI specifically are advised to do self-quarantine or host home quarantine for approximately 14 days specifically some are actually appearing to be asymptomatic so it's very important for us to know this because this is technically the incubation period of the disease so the transmission of your your SARS-CoV-2 can be from animal to person so this is if a person eats at the livestock or were and exposed to the wildlife to the animal so it can spill over Okay, the WHO described it as a spillover. So it can either be through deliberate um, or close contact to animals or really simply because of a mutation. On the other hand, we also have a person-to-person. -person. So how can somebody transfer the virus from one person to another? It can actually be through close contact with one person with about 6 feet or through your respiratory droplet so at the moment what we actually know is that as all respiratory um, viruses they are actually being transmitted through respiratory droplets although um, maybe some of you already have seen articles like saying that your your SARS-CoV-2 is considered to be airborne already but I want to to be clear with that Okay, if you already have read an article, it actually said that hospitals are being advised to have your airborne precaution, but that doesn't mean that it can actually be um, transmitted 
through air already. So specifically, these are for confined rooms, for isolated rooms. So the air there, okay, is very much confined and it's only cir it circulates only within the room. That's the reason why in hospitals, they are advised to, to have an airborne precaution, okay? So there were articles saying that the virus can live up to three hours in the air. The most recent says it's it's eight hours, but it's not as airborne as if like the entire air is being contaminated. It's not like that. Okay, I hope every I hope that is clear, so that we won't be fostering fear to everyone because it's not. Okay, what is known and what is um very much recorded by our data is that it is transmitted through respiratory droplets close contact that is why we are being we are being mandated by the government and by the department of health even the the who and C cdc to really practice physical distancing okay practice physical distancing and of course we also have your community community transmission so this is the reason why we already had your your code red sub level two because we already have a local transmission. What do we mean by local transmission? The virus was not contra was not contracted by from Wuhan anymore from positive patient, but it is actually was locally transmitted on the community. The reason why we already have your community quarantine. Okay. So again, I just want to emphasize the importance of really staying at home because as you can see, maybe you are wondering why is our, why is the government so strict about community or house quarantine? It is for the reason that when we are trying to compare the overall population of the Philippines, which is around 109 million population, as compared to the bed capacity that we have, it's really a big dis disparity so there's a, there's a big scarcity when it comes to um facilities so i just really want to say that please everyone stay at home just study your lesson make yourself busy make uh, watch youtube videos watch educational videos and of course always maintain and always have your good health all the time okay so moving on now what are the common symptoms of your COVID-19? And this is very much shocking because the, the, the signs and symptoms that you are gonna see are very much common to the usual flu that we already have. It's your fever, your cough, and even shortness of breath. So at the moment, if we're gonna, uh, later on, I'll be showing you the algorithm followed by the DOH and by the different hospitals, an algorithm or the workflow in general that they follow on how do they decide whether or not to, to confine an individual or not. And that's very important for you to know so that you will not also be spreading panic among your families. Okay? So as medical technologists, it's our job to all, not only to check the specimen, to check the the causative agent but also to be very much mindful of what is um what are the informations that we are disseminating so let's move on so other symptoms can actually be sputum production headache hemoptysis okay diarrhea dyspnea so or difficulty in breathing and lymphopenia so lymphopenia is a depression or a low count of your lymphocytes lymphocytes a type of your white blood cells so we discussed that before so what are the diagnoses how does we that how do we diagnose somebody or someone having your covid19 or if they are infected by your sars coronavirus 2 we are using your real-time reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction so Eventually, we'll be discussing what PCR is, but technically, what we do here is to detect if there is a presence of the genetic material of the virus, specifically the RNA. That is what we do in your polymerase chain reaction. We try to amplify a particular segment of 
your the genetic material of the virus for us to detect it sir what do we mean by real time yes it's real time so wh wh what do we mean by real time you, you would be able to get the result with a very very much short turnaround time on the other hand sir what is reverse transcriptase uh, going back now to the first the first few slides that i showed you isn't it that your coronavirus is an envelope pro is an envelope virus and is an rna virus and if you're gonna review your central dogma okay if you're gonna review your central dogma your central dogma okay th that is the production of your protein so first we have your your dna and then your dna will be um duplicated or will be copied that is your duplication and then the second one will be to your transcription whereby your dna will become now your rna your messenger rna your transfer rna and your ribosomal rna so technically what we have in your coronavirus is rna we have the rib ribonucleic acid okay your ribonucleic acid so technically your your coronavirus doesn't have your DNA. So what do we what we need now is a is an enzyme that will convert or yeah that will convert your your RNA to become now your DNA. Okay, to become now your DNA. So that is now the function of your reverse transcriptase. Okay, that's the function of your reverse transcriptase. The first thing we do is to first make a dna copy a single strand dna copy of your rna okay and then afterwards we're gonna copy that are the dna strand and form its complementary strand and eventually we amplify that that genetic material okay so that is what being done and i just want to mention it that it is medical techno medical technologies that is one of the frontliners that does the diagnosis okay so the bigger question now is that should we be concerned should we be alerted or should we be um, concerned about what is happening around us for me of course yes because we have the power to either flatten the curve or to worsen what is happening right now so according to the statistics we have a transmission rate which is actually two to three new case, newly infected from one case we also have a fatality rate of approximately 3.4 percent we know that the incubation period of the virus is approximately 2 to 14 days although there are some outliers are ranging from three weeks incubation period and there are around 109 countries and territories that are already been infe um, infected by coronavirus so having said that now as we are talking at the moment okay as i am discussing at the moment so i retrieve a march 25 data and we actually have 636 confirmed cases and there are around 728 cases that tested negative but this is very uh, um very um concerning because we have uh, cases of pending result around 595 so technically we're gonna expect a an addition to your 636 and to to if you really want to check that you can check the doh website for a real time um, a real-time update so right now i'll be going to my safari and actually show you the real state of the coronavirus at the moment so we actually have right now as of march 26 we already have 707 confirmed cases of corona virus disease 2019 we are still waiting for 654 results so as you can see we also have the real time so as you can see 707 are already infected 
and you can actually go and check the um, you can actually go and check the website of DOH for the real time so that you also are able to make sure that we are actually having the legit information so globally we actually have 414,179 confirmed cases so going back now should we be alerted so we should be alerted because we have high risk groups which are older adults and people with serious chronic medical conditions most of the people who actually died of COVID-19 actually have comorbidities so when we say comorbidities they actually have other diseases aside from COVID-19 so it can either be heart disease or di it can either be diabetes and lung disease so it's very important to really um, to really protect this high, high risk groups specifically our elderly because their immune system are already are compromised so we have uh, the COVID-19 health advisory coming from the DOH so right now we're actually on code um, code red sub level 2 so there is already a, an evidence of community transmission and there is an increase of cases of COVID-19 that's the reason why we are all subjected to enhanced community quarantine so a very much important thing to understand now is the prevention of COVID-19 yes COVID-19 is technically contagious it can be transmitted from animal to person from person to person and now we are seeing local community transmission but there's still hope for us because your COVID-19 can still be prevented so how can we prevent your COVID-19 so the TUA the TUA gave some advisory so very important prevention tips are of course washing hands with soap and water and also using alcohol based hand drop 70% of your isopropyl alcohol so it's very important for us to wash our hands to mechanically remove your viruses okay second is to cover your mouth and nose when coughing so always practice your sneezing and coughing etiquette M make use of your your towel your handkerchief your tissue paper or you can actually use your you can flex your elbow like you're doing a, do a dub to cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing so while listening may you do a dub okay dub okay so you can actually sneeze and cough on your elbow okay to avoid the dispersion of your droplets to the air so you can also wear face mask specifically when you are showing symptoms okay specifically when you're already showing symptoms so and if you're in very much close contact with other people although we don't see that much anymore because there is literally a a um commu enhanced community quarantine for the entire Luzon on the other hand on the other hand we also avoid close contact with anyone with flu-like symptoms so if you happen to be around with someone with flu-like symptoms you avoid close contact with them already and if you on the other hand is the one with flu-like symptoms you it's also your initiative to assess yourself if um you're having severe um symptoms already which i will be showing later on and you also have to do your self-quarantine aside from that you should also avoid unprotected contact with live wild or farm animals so technically it's already known that we can that our dogs our pet dogs and cats cannot transmit the virus okay so and aside from that you also have to thoroughly cook your meat and your eggs all the time to avoid transmission of the virus on the other hand now i'll be showing to you the list of 
a checklist. So actually, this is a scoring system provided by the DOH, adapted from the DOH guideline. So you can actually start to assess yourself if you are having flu-like symptoms. And you can actually have a grade, a, a point system. So if you have cough, colds, diarrhea, sore throat, myalgia, or body aches, you have head headache, and you have fever, that is equivalent to one point. If you already have difficulty in breathing, you're experiencing fatigue, that is already two points. And if you traveled recently during the four, the past 14 days, specifically to um, the countries that have confirmed cases of cr your COVID-19, that is three points. If you have been to um, Wuhan, South Korea, or other travel history to COVID-19 infected area, this is another three, per three points. And if you have close contact with people that ha and you have been taking care of positive COVID-19 patients, that is also three points. So if you actually had a six to 12 points of our checklist, you might have to consult or seek the consultation of your doctor. And if you have 12 to 24 of the, of the 12 to 24 score, you can actually contact the OH hotline in 0286517800. So that's very important to be self-aware. On the other hand, we have here the algorithm. So this is the algorithm as of March 16, 2020. And it is very important. So if the patient up, um, if the patient comes into the um, the hospital or the facility, you, we, do, we first assess their signs and symptoms. So for person under monitoring, this, are, this, this can either be um, asymptomatic patients okay with exposure to 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 the virus or to covid positive covid 19 positive patients so they have to do self quarantine on the other hand you can also have here your person under investigation so right now you maybe you've been hearing people that actually are positive with covid 19 but are being sent home because their symptoms are mild Okay, and they don't have comorbidities and they are not from the elderly group. Okay, on the other hand, you also have the mild, the mild positive to comorbidity and are elderly with severe and critical symptoms. So we have to admit them. So right now, um, what we know is that you have to test, you have to test negative twice before you you are considered to be re to be recovering from COVID-19. On the other hand, this is the reason why um, the kits are very important because patients are being tested using your, your reverse transcriptase PCR, your RT-PCR every two days, every 48 hours. Okay? They are being detected, they are being tested every four, every two days and it is very important. So, how can we prevent now the spread of your COVID-19? Again, according to the CDC, avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. Stay home when you are sick. This is very important. Even if you're not sick, just stay home because you might have, you might be contracting the, the virus outside. You can also be carriers at the end of the day to cover your mouth, your, Cover your mouth when you, you cough or you sneeze with tissue and you always throw the tissue on the trash. And clean and disinfect frequently touch objects and surfaces using a regular household cleaning spray or a wipe. And of course, wash your hands regularly. If soap and water are not readily available, you can actually use a sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. So. Again, we have we did this the DOH hand washing program, so it is very important for you to remember. And of course, for our frontliners, it's very important to always have your complete personal protective equipment. So ha they have their goggles, they have their their masks, their gowns, they have the their their shoe covers, and they also have their gloves. 
so it's very important as well to really take note of this um specifically when we when we come back we will be having your donning and doffing so that's very important and actually that's everything that i need to say and i hope this have been very informative on your case because you will be doing a summative report regarding your covid 19 your sars coronavirus 2 and i hope it's really uh, very much inform informative to everyone and i hope um it, you will now be equipped with knowledge that covid 19 can be prevented and we all have a job to do in this community quarantine and that is to stay home and to stay healthy so i will be seeing you next time for another video another discussion of our topic so i hope you are all doing fine so again don't forget to smile and don't forget to pray this have been sir jomar and have have a nice day ahead goodbye